All right, how's it going, YouTube? So what is this big mess on this table here? Well, this is, these are items that I received in the last week. Um, of course, the, everything I'm showing right here is Swedish army surplus. But, uh, you know, I've, I, I collect vintage stuff from whatever country. It just really depends on what the availability is and, uh, you know, testing out different things like that. I found that with the Swedish um, surplus, you know, about 90% of the stuff is made very well and it's been around forever. And that's why I gravitate towards uh, those. So I've got my tripod, because you know how I always make you guys dizzy, correct? Let's take a look at some things, you know, maybe you're trying to figure out what some of these are. You probably know what this is, just because I had purchased one, I don't know, a month ago. Very similar. This one, you might get an inkling, but, uh, you know, this is, this is a hard one for me to figure out. When I just when you just see the uh, case, um, that's super easy. That's an LK thirty five. Now, obviously, I've got I don't know how many videos about LK thirty fives, but this is one mark that I have not found on this uh, this type of LK thirty five. So let's, oh yeah, of course right here, you can see here I've got a used, um, I guess what do you call those, uh, Swedish uh, Trangia uh, mess kit, you know, it's not really made by Trangia, but uh, maybe it was designed by them, um, maybe not, I don't know, but it uh, doesn't really matter, you know what it is, so let's just start here. Let's go with this case. So what's really great about this is this has this nice long strap, which you can remove. See here, I just pop those off. Um, you can hang this on your belt, your duty belt. So this is about two and a half inches wide so that it will work on a two and a quarter duty belt or, or whatever type of belt you've got um, so here this I believe this is elastic and you've got this tab there so you just pull that oh, let's take a look at this so so this thing you can see here is made in 1942 that's the serial number 2784 we've got the Swedish crown on the top and I was just looking to see if there's any markings from any unit or, you know, a soldier marked it. I just didn't detect any. Uh, it's very hard, maybe, on this camera to see the stamp, but that's a Hensolt, which is um, German. So this was made during uh, World War II. So, this is what I've been looking for for quite a while to get these. And I finally found someone on um, uh, eBay that was selling these. And I like to buy from ind individuals because you can see exactly what you're getting. Um, I think this is available on... Is it Coleman's or, you know, it's just one of those, um, it's available on one of the uh, online surplus places. And I think they run around 149. So I did bid up to 129 or 121 plus tax. It was 130 bucks. Um, it's kind of expensive, but this thing's in like almost new condition you can see here this it's not all worn 
Um, this case is in great condition. Um, obviously, I used my um, I used some uh, leather care on there to clean it up and protect it. Well, let's take a look at this so you can see on there. Got this nice little cover on this strap, which you can also remove this. Um, on the end of this, you do have this um, button hole. So this you can attach to the button on your uniform, you know, like in the old days. Uh, you might, I have a, Hard time trying to find some place where you can attach this on a lot of the, uh, you know, modern clothing because you're not going to, uh, you know, have anything with a button, right? Um, let's see, this is a six by thirty millimeters, so six times, so you know, it's it's enough to uh, magnify and have a decent. Uh, field of view um, for something that's so small um, you know I saw a lot of um, pictures of these I don't really ever remember seeing any dimensions anywhere online where I was trying to get more information on these things I don't ever remember people saying that these things are you know like maybe four inches um, you know, and then usually you see these pictures, they're standing by itself. So you have no reference on how big or small these are. So I was in my mind, every time I saw these, I was thinking it was, you know, like the larger type of monocular, binoculars, you know, that have like a 50 millimeter lens and, and much, you know, bigger. Um, you know, not, I wasn't smart enough to figure out oh, a six... Um, by 30 is physically small. I just I can picture that in my head until I you know actually got it in my hand um, I don't know where I left my uh, Measuring tape, but I do have something to measure this um, Let's take a look here. So the total length on this thing is only four inches from the front to the back Um I don't think you can see through this, but anyway, they do have markings inside of there. I'm just trying to see, and you can't really, anyway, it's very clear inside of there. They do have um, markings in there, so you can try to gauge um, you know, range finding. Um, I'm pretty sure this is probably given more to like artillery um, and uh, maybe, uh, uh, officers just to try to find um, how far things are so you can go um, direct uh, so you can go direct artillery and things like that but um, I don't know this thing is great I love how compact it is it's what I really got it for is I do do some hunting i usually don't use range finders but i thought that this thing would kind of help me out a little bit to to find more um game in the field and uh yeah that's really what it's for it's kind of a novelty thing too obviously you can get some brand new ones that are going to cost a lot less than this one um, but this is made very well it's still useful and for me, you know, it's, it's the uh, style that I like, so that's the biggest thing. Uh, so on this little case, this thing's only six inches um, tall by about three and a quarter, three and a half inches wide. Um, I don't know. It looks very interesting to me. You can have a different opinion, but that's my opinion. All right, so what else is new that I haven't shown? Oh, this is kind of new. This is a, a new, um, see, I'm not even, okay, I'm not making you sick by moving the camera around, but I'm just not putting stuff in the, the field of view. 
Um, so this thing here, once again, you can see here, this is 1939. You got the three crowns. Um, you can put this thing on a belt. You've got this there. Um, so doesn't this look very similar to that other one that I had, you know, a month ago? Well, that's true because it is made by the same company, Silva. Um, I have not found exactly when this. I, uh, I'm I'm guessing that this was made in 1939 at the same time as the case, but there is no marking that I've found yet that says 1939 on here. Um, this is kind of redundant to the other one that I bought. Um, so why do I have two of these? Well, I'm always looking to find something in better condition. Uh, you know, that's why, you know, I buy multiple mess kits if I can, and then I select the ones that I want to keep or, or whatever, and then I sell what I don't. Um, which I don't care for is maybe it's not in the best condition. So I guess on my question on these is, you know, I don't know enough about the history on here, but you know, this thing, uh, see, now I can't even get this open. Um, you see here how on this one is stamped on here was 1939. Um, I can't see if it's exactly the same. I mean, there's there's a couple things on here besides just the stamps. Um, you see this top lid is very similar, but it's not quite the same. Um, obviously, this one has been used more, and that's why you see this mirror on here it's, has that ring. Um, see here that the fluid inside is oxidized or something and then you can kind of see on there that it's see that white color on the arrow it's uh flaking off which is not on this one and so i'm not 100 percent sure if this one was actually made the one on my left i'm not 100 percent sure if this was made in 1939 obviously it was made for the Swedish army because you got the three crowns on there Another thing that's slightly different is and I think what happened is on this um, Lanyard here is not leather and I think that just the original Leather one probably just wore out and then they use this Instead because you see here on this one has the leather lanyard on there <clears throat> um, what else there are three holes screwed into this one on the left one two and over here is three on that bottom so what was that for was that to am I just missing screws or something you see right here there is some kind of rivet or something I don't know what the reason for that is but regardless um, I don't know um, the other thing is if you take a look on the the top case you've got this these lines on here which you don't have on the one on the right so I need to do a little more research um, just wanted to show you this. It's very boring if you really don't care about um, vintage things. All right, what else we got? Here's here's another newer edition. So what this is? This is a uh, this is listed as a machine gun belt. So all it is is a two and one quarter inch wide leather duty belt, which is made for, um, you know, the uh, Swedish version of the Browning 
automatic rifle, the bar, mach light machine gun. Um, so um, you've seen my bandoliers and things like that. This belt is the same size as that. Um, of course, that bandolier is made for the uh, for just a regular rifle, and so the cartridges are for rifle um, cartridges. This one is made so that I can put my machine gun pouches onto this. So you can see this is the perfect width to fit into there. Um, so you can have two or more of these on this belt, plus whatever else I want to attach onto this. Um, now, some way, and, and then those pouches will go on a, a smaller belt. Um, I guess the reason I got this is it's leather, it's large, and it's multi-purpose. So my idea was is that I could, you know, wear this with those pouches, but also I can modify, um, you know, wrap this around, let's say, an LK35, and I can modify it so I can hang things on there without modifying this, sewing into there, cutting stuff out or whatever, um, which I just don't really care for. Um, so I was thinking I might, I might use it in that method too, because, you know, basically wrapping this around the bag, um, so then I can attach more pouches on the outside if I want to. Uh, now I haven't tried it with this specific one. I've done it with a smaller, strap that's not as wide and so I know it works. I just figured because this is very wide, very stable, it might be a better one to hang things from. But um, I really think that this was a great deal. I think it was around $35, $40 for this. It's a massive piece of um, leather. This was probably made in the 30s possibly you know somewhere between the 20s to the 40s there is the three crowns on there um i don't see any state uh excuse me uh, date stamp see there's my speech again but um very made very well okay let's go over to this God, maybe I should just do separate videos, right? So you don't have to watch all this crap. But you can, all, I'm sure you've already um, forwarded past whatever you didn't want to see. Uh, so this is just an LK35. It's unused. You can see here this thing has um, scratches on here. At least the bag is not used, or if it was, is very lightly. Um, in storage, these things get beat up. Um, this is part of how I support buying new products is I will find things that might be redundant and then resell them typically on eBay, sometimes just to friends or coworkers. Um, but this is one of those here. Um, the good thing is I've had, I've had about 20 of these go yeah, I've sold probably 15 on eBay and another five or so I've given to friends or sold to friends or coworkers. But I haven't found this um, stamp on any of them and it's very difficult to see. But this is from Hagelofs and I'll see if I can do it. It's Okay, but... Um, 1988 got the three crowns and it says hey gloss uh and then sweden or see i can't even say the names it's, it's a very good i uh, see i can't see whatever that's a swedish word for sweden i don't speak swedish so i apologize that i can't even pronounce it or anything like that um, which makes this a little different than the other ones I've had though. So you do have this coating inside here to help make it water resistant. Um, but then 
there's nothing here so does that mean that this is I think this might be a double double thick and so like on, on the inside I still have that uh, coating there is my guess but that's just my get best educated guess yeah to me it looks like it is just like I said you just have this extra um, cloth inside of here to help protect it because that's where stuff's gonna s poke out from right um, other than that I haven't measured this one to see if this is the mysterious LK 50 you know which there was never officially one made I mean I've just noticed on having different ones um, that you do get different measurements on here so sometimes they have the they have more depth on this and that must be where the uh, LK 50 myth comes from is that they weren't always uniformly the same dimensions on these bags um, but this is something that I will end up reselling and uh, I can usually get about 99 to 150 dollars typically on these now that does not include the 15 percent that uh, eBay and uh, PayPal extract from it after it's sold I mean I still make a modest modest um, profit on this um, just to keep supporting myself buying junk but um, I'm not making like a lot off of that. It's just to get more various things on on uh, eBay, so I don't just have just one thing. Okay, last thing is here's here's a used um, stainless steel mess kit. So you see here, this one is very well used, which really isn't that big of a deal. So yeah, cosmetically. When you look at this, man, this thing's beat to shit, but I mean, it's stainless steel, so um, it just really doesn't wear like the aluminum ones do. And most importantly is, yeah, outside this paint is gone, but inside there is no, uh, there is no rust where they riveted these things or spot welded these things into here and that's what you want to look for when you're buying these um, once again this is something I'm not going to make a lot of I most likely won't make a lot of profit on but I, I found someone who's selling some used ones so I've, I've bought two used sets and this one I can't even see what the stamps are I haven't really cleaned this up um, the other one is uh, uh, Pespolagic Estuna. Uh, I can't pronounce that one either. But uh, this one's probably uh, Gensa or Gensi, uh, however you want to pronounce that one too, and how it's really pronounced. Um, it may not be matching. I think it might be matching. It's just this thing has been beat to heck. Good thing is they still um, fits on there, got a seal. Um, you know, I'll probably get around a hundred dollars for this, which is not making that much profit after, you know, my expense of getting these shipped here and, uh, how much, uh, eBay and PayPal take after they're sold, but it's just more to diversify and sell things. And sometimes I get lucky and something sells for a lot more money than I'm counting on but realistically I'm gonna guess I'm gonna get around a hundred to a hundred and twenty-five but if you guys have any questions here maybe I'll try to go specifically to a couple of these items and have its own video I appreciate you watching and yeah, this is just way too much time for too little to show so if you made it this far you're a trooper. Have a good one.